Hey, what's going on, guys? How you doing out today? Hey, listen, it is fight week, baby. It is the return of the notorious Conor McGregor. And since he's going to be making his way to the octagon, I just felt like I had to talk about something that I'm just absolutely enamored with this guy about. I was watching the very first interview that he did with the UFC. And in there, he said, I don't feel pressure. What is the fear of the pressure? What is the fear of losing? I've lost hundreds of times. Anybody in this game to get to the top has lost hundreds of times. And if we look back over that man's career and we see things where he's willing to fight any man at any point, at any time, but more importantly, what I always want to point your attention to is when he lost to the Diaz, when he lost to Nate, Right? All the buildup, all the hype, and he lost to Nate. So many people would have been completely dejected then. There were people lined up around the block that were ready to make fun of that man, ready to ridicule that man. People that have never had the testicular fortitude to step into a cage themselves, but they were going to mock that man because of the confidence that he had in himself and his ability to put out and call his shot. Why they call him Mystic Mike. But laying there in the octagon, defeated, having to eat some of that humble pie that we are all going to have to eat. What did Connor do? Did he hang his head and cry? Did he make excuses? No. What did he do? He said, I want to run it back. I want to run it back. As a matter of fact, I want to run it back the exact same way. I want to run it back at 170. I want everything to be the same. I want to run it back. And think about that. Think about the risk that he took in that moment. His superstar was up here. He could have easily packed his bags and said, let me get another guy, try to get a rebound, then maybe try to get another Nate fight. No, he said run it back. Knowing full well that if he lost to Nate again, what would that have done for his momentum? What would that have done for the naysayers? Run it back. And he stepped out there and they absolutely went to war. And his legend rose. Why? Because he's not afraid of losing. You know, I tell all the guys all the time that I'm rolling with guys that are a little bit junior to me on the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu mats. I'm a purple belt. I'll be working with some white belts. And I will put myself in bad positions. And every once in a while, because I'm trying something new, the, purple, the white belt, they'll catch me. Right? Why are you afraid of them catching you? Why are you afraid of making a mistake in your life? How are you going to grow? How are you going to get better? If all you ever do is stick to that one thing that you do extremely well, and I just went and beat up a white belt all day long because I was doing my one thing, which is go to your back, what growth do I get? What happens then in life when I finally meet that enemy that I can't go to their back? What happens? I lose. So put yourself in these compromised positions. Let yourself take countless L's in practice. Be willing to take L's in the big main parts of your life. Go out on a limb. Put yourself out there in front of the masses. Risk ridicule. Let them talk shit. Who cares? At the end of the day, you will be separate from them. You will be miles away from them because you will occupy a space of action. You will gain traction. You will stumble. You will slip. You will fall. But you will stand up. And because you'll stand up, you'll do something that they will never do. You will cross the finish line and they'll just talk trash from the cheap seats. Which one do you want to be? Learn to take an L so you can win down the road. Until next time, guys, I see you, Ram Fam. Salute.